We often use zero offset data to help us identify primary reflections and the depths where they originate. Consider this schematic of VSP data. Again, we see the downgoing first arrivals here and the upgoing reflected rays here. To determine the depth of a particular reflector, we trace the upgoing reflection back downward until it intersects the first arrivals. The point where the reflection intersects the first arrivals defines the depth where the reflection originated. Using a real data set, we again trace reflections back to their depth points. We can then correlate these depths to sonic or density logs run in the well, tying our surface seismic data to the subsurface geology. We can also use VSP data to estimate seismic processing parameters, like reflection coefficients. We generally derive reflection coefficients from density and sonic logs, such as these. In this example, we have a strong impedance contrast between a shale layer and a limestone layer. From these data, we would calculate a reflection coefficient of minus 0.18. We also recorded VSP data at these depths. This is the first arrival at depth 1, and this is the first arrival at depth 2. By comparing the relative amplitudes of these first arrivals, we would calculate a reflection coefficient of minus 0.15 for the shale limestone interface. The difference between the two calculated values is due to the fact that sonic and density tools measure rock properties in zones affected by drilling. VSP data, on the other hand, may be more representative of rock properties in the undisturbed zones away from the well bore. Now let's compare the imaging capabilities of VSP and surface seismic data. We'll look at data from the Statford Field in the North Sea. The VSP data were recorded in a deviated well, and the surface seismic data were part of a 3D survey. Here is a vertical slice from the 3D grid which follows the surface track of the deviated well. And here is the image constructed from the VSP data. Using well data, we determine the position of the Statford sand. We can easily pick this fault on the VSP data while the same fault is less clear on the seismic data. Additional features such as this scarp are more apparent on the VSP data as well. From this comparison, we can see that VSP data can provide a more detailed image of the structure and stratigraphy of an area. This improved resolution is invaluable when interpreting faults and siting development wells. Remember, however, that in this example, we've combined zero offset data with a deviated well bore. In vertical wells, zero offset data cannot provide lateral images of the subsurface. Let's consider one last use of zero offset data, that of making predictions ahead of the drill bit. Drillers and explorationists often want information about the geology below the bottom of the hole. This information can help us determine what mud weights and bit types to use, identify zones for possible formation testing, and even whether or not to continue drilling. Obviously, logs can give us information only about the section already drilled. But in VSP, we can record reflections from below the bottom of the hole as well, giving us information about the section still to be drilled. The major benefit of offset VSP is that it enables us to look at the subsurface some distance away from the well bore. This image is invaluable when our targets are laterally discontinuous features, such as salt structures and reefs. Suppose we've drilled a deviated well, looking for oil trapped against a salt structure. Our well penetrated the first two traps, but to tap any remaining oil, we need a more accurate image of the salt. We place a seismic source here and record seismic data at geophone positions here, here, and here. Based on our velocity model, we assign unique constant velocities from the source to the top of the salt, through the salt, and from the salt through each layer. Since the travel time from the source to the top of the salt is constant for all geophones, the travel times for each source geophone pair will define aplanatic curves. The salt sediment interface can be anywhere along these curves and still satisfy the recorded travel times from the source to the geophone. We then define the true salt sediment interface as the tangent to these curves. Now we have a more accurate image of the salt structure and can better locate any future wells.